Now we're going to talk about lane changes. And one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're doing lane changes, kids that I'm teaching, the moment I say the word lane change, our foot mysteriously vanishes from the gas pedal, gets on the brake pedal, and we start lowering our speed unacceptably. So what we want to do, there are times where we slow down to do a lane change, but more often than not, you're going to want to maintain your speed in the lane change. And we're going to talk about when do you slow, when do you maintain, when do you signal, when do you not signal. Um, now, the first part is, if I'm in this case here, and just for argument's sake, to simplify things, if I know that I have to get over to do a right turn, I'm going to signal, mirror check, mirror check, shoulder check. And if it's safe and there's no cars here, I'm going to maintain my speed and get over into the right lane. Now that would be ideal, there's no cars around, like the simple life is good. But it's not always going to be that easy. So I'll give you this example. Let's say you signal and check, or you just simply know that you have to do a right turn. And you look in this mirror, you look in that mirror, and you know that there's a car off your back right corner. So in this case here, you're going 50, they're going 50, the speed limit's 50, it's a nice day. You cannot speed to accomplish a lane change. So ultimately, they're going to beat you. So all that you have to do, if it's just you and one other car, you're just going to ease your foot off the gas. You're not going to go to the brake pedal. You just ease your foot off the gas, let them win, and they're only going to win by so much because you don't want the next wave of cars to catch up. And if you press your brake pedal, that might be exactly what happens. So all we're going to do is coast for a moment. We're not going to signal right now because they might see that and sit in this blind zone for longer than we want to. So what happens is we're going to, uh, we're going to allow this vehicle to pass us as we coast. Once they get by us, then we're going to throw on our signal once they're a little bit past us. We're going to redo our checks and our shoulder check, make sure that that was the only car. Now you can do your right lane change. Now, it gets interesting. One car should not be a very big issue. If they're going lower than you or you're well ahead of them, you get the lane change done. If they're like this, you let them win, you get in right after. But what if there was a car here and they're not alone? This lane was full of cars that were going 50 kilometers an hour. If that's the case, what you're going to do, anytime there's more than one car causing trouble for your lane change, you don't wait to signal. If there's more than one car that's causing trouble, you're going to signal right away. And the most important thing you're going to do is you're going to maintain near the appropriate speed. If you're going between 45 and 50, somewhere in that vicinity, this car is likely going to continue on anyways. So they're going to win the race. They'll continue on. The hope is the next car in line is going to let you in. And if you're maintaining near the appropriate speed, it is not hard for them to wait back here and let you finish. However, if when this car was here before it passed, if you touch your brake pedal to let that car win the race, now you're going to be down to 45, 40, maybe even 35. If you touch your brake pedal, you could be down to 30 before you know it. So, if you get down to 35 or 30, what are the chances of this car slowing down to 25 to let you in? Slim to none. So when there's many cars, maintain near the appropriate speed, have your signal on, get over once it's safe, as eventually one of these cars will let you in. Also be aware, the only time you would slow in this instance is if someone in your lane was slowing as well, but now you're inside their four second space gap, then you'd have to keep your space gap as well. Um, furthermore to that, with the lane changes, when there's many, many cars, if on a road test, you signaled appropriately, you maintained the appropriate speed, the examiner will give you something else to do. But if you never signal, or you slow unnecessarily, or something along those lines, that you muddy the waters for yourself, then they might not help you out. So make sure you're doing those good things for that lane change. Now, the other type of street you might be on, maybe you're on a three-lane street where there's cars A, car C, there can be car B, and you know a street where there's multiple lanes going the same direction. The only thing I have to offer above this is make sure when there's more than one lane, don't just worry about B, because what if as you go to try and get into the second lane, what if lane C has the same idea? So you have to be aware of all of these lanes. The other thing is, if you're in a position where it was safe to do so, you can change more than one lane at a time, but it is up to you to make sure that you know it's safe. 
And obviously, if you do two lane changes and in the third lane there's a collision, chances are you're responsible, so you have to know that it can be done safely. And those are most of the principles behind safe lane changing.